Hello everybody, I'm Grant Fluff from Flusher Sports Zone and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, in honor of the preseason, I mean technically last week, the Hall of Fame game was on, but the real NFL preseason begins tonight. And because I was having some technical difficulties with my computer charger, I figured it's time to do a video that I've kind of wanted to wait a very long time to film. I've waited pretty much all offseason, and we're going to do it. And that's going to be ranking my top 32 quarterbacks heading into the season. All right. And again, big shout out to Big Four Updates on Instagram for making this list. Please go follow him. Help him out. Uh, let's get him to hopefully 800 followers soon. And of course, if you wanted to follow my Instagram page, there you go. Plus your sports zone too. Let's try to get up to 900. Of course, post daily sports news on there. So let's go recap what I got. Now, it's kind of, I wanted to do this way more, <laughs> less revealing at least from the beginning. But uh, let's just go right on into it. So first things first, you're going to notice looking at this list. Where is a Seahawks quarterback? Um, I cannot say with confidence that neither Geno Smith or Drew Locke are top 32 quarterbacks in this league. I can't do it. In fact, I only have one backup, and that's who's at 32. So, pretty much, if I had to sort this out, I would probably put Drew Locke at 34, 35, and I would honestly probably put Geno Smith at 39, 40. Um, there's a lot of backups I would probably rather have than those two. Maybe not Drew Locke because Locke's young, but definitely a lot of quarterbacks I'd rather have over Geno Smith. There's guys like Teddy Bridgewater, Nick Foles, a couple of other guys who didn't make the list. I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. Jacoby Brissett. Um, and, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, technically, I also, just want my last update before we get into the list here, I also kind of messed up because I forgot Jimmy Garoppolo existed when I made this list. So, yes, you see Gardner Minshew at 32, but we're going to pretend that's Daniel Jones at 32. I think Garoppolo is right below Trey Lance, so we're going to technically put Garoppolo at 24. Kind of my bad. But I guess in this universe, we're just going to pretend that Garoppolo doesn't exist. That was my bad. I should have placed him at 24, but I kind of forgot. I'm not going to lie. I forgot he existed when I was making this list. So that's why Minshew's there, not Garoppolo. Technically, Garoppolo's like 25th, 24th, but whatever. In this universe, we'll just pretend that Gar Garoppolo's 33. All right? All right. Just makes this list look a little bit better. All right, so... At number 32, we have Gardner Minshew. Now, I heard he had a rough start of training camp. Maybe he'll get going with the preseason starting. Maybe he'll also get traded to a team that's in dire need of a starting quarterback because obviously Jalen Hurts isn't going to lose his job anytime soon. So maybe Minshew goes to a situation like Atlanta, like the Giants, maybe like the Texans, or like where you have a good start starting quarterback but you need a quality backup or you don't know how your star is going to do so it's good to have a very reliable backup so we'll see what happens with Minshew after the preseason but obviously as a Jaguar fan I'm going to be a little bit biased here and put Minshew on the list just because you know man I, I truly do feel that he has the potential to really do something great he torched the Jets, granted it was the Jets, but he torched the Jets last year through for two touchdowns, and say what you will about that Week 18 game against the Cowboys, but Minshew played well, at least in the first half. That, I mean, I know the Cowboys won that game by a lot, of, he scored, what was it, 51 points or whatever, but Minshew played solid for literally just getting like an hour notice before the game start that he was going to be starting. So I'll give Minshew Beth of the doubt there. I do think he's going to show in the preseason why he shouldn't, 
you know, be a backup behind Jalen Hurts. I think he's going to show why he should be, if not starting quarterback, at least backing up someone like Daniel Jones or Davis Mills, someone who can get replaced. And speaking of Daniel Jones at 31, I technically speaking have him listed as besides either Drew Locke or Geno Smith as the worst starting quarterback in the NFL. People are going to fight me saying, listen, Daniel Jones throws a lot of touchdowns. Yes, you make a point. If you look at his career numbers, you're going to say, what does he have, like 40-something passing touchdowns? That's not necessarily terrible for a guy who's played in the league for three years. Look at his interceptions. Somewhere in the 30s, and he's lost a lot of fumbles. He literally loses a fumble every other game. It's so bad. I hate watching Daniel Jones play. I really think now he's still young. He still has potential. Maybe it was because Joe Judge was his head coach. This is the make or break year. You know, this is the make or break year for the Giants. Tyrod Taylor, another backup who just missed out on this list. He's right behind Daniel Jones. And that reliable veteran can easily pass you if the Giants start the season off 0 3, 0 4. I don't see the Giants winning any more than five games this year anyway. So I do think Brian DeBull is going to be a very good coach, but uh, I. At least not year one with the Giants. I don't think it's going to show. And I still think Jones is either going to be injury prone or turnover prone. And that's what we've seen out of him so far. Hopefully that changes because I like the guy. But I just don't see him doing very good. At number 30, we have Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, he's essentially won the starting job. I know Mason Rudolph, surprisingly enough, had the best training camp out of all the Steeler quarterbacks. But obviously, you're going to start Trubisky here. And uh, you're going to rest up Kenny Pickett, you know, your first round draft pick until he's ready to go, hopefully next year. But yeah, no surprise at all that Trubisky is, uh, again, the starting role in Pittsburgh. And honestly, no surprise that Rudolph will probably be the backup guy. Trubisky is interesting because I do think he was fine with the Bears. Now, granted, was he number two overall material? I don't think so. Not even close. But... You know, and everyone's going to say, oh, but Mitchell Trubisky was drafted ahead of Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Everyone ignores the fact that Trubisky was the best quarterback coming out of college that year, but neither here nor there. People are always going to point at that. Listen, Matt Nagy, terrible coach. I don't know how the Colts defensive coordinator, I'm blanking on his name right now, that's the Bears' new coach, though. I'm sure he's at least better than Matt Nagy. Oh, actually, I'm kind of bringing up my point for Justin Fields. Forget that. But yeah, Mike Tomlin, he is a coach who's been coaching the Steelers since 2000, what, seven, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, has not gone below 500 once. And that was with guys like Mason Rudolph, Devlin Hodges, an aging Ben Roethlisberger, Byron Leftwich, Charlie Batch. I mean, I can list off all these very mediocre quarterbacks the Steelers have had besides Roethlisberger, essentially. And the Steelers keep on winning. They're going to win because of their defense. We know TJ Watt's going to get double-digit sacks. Cameron Hayward maybe also. Minka Fitzpatrick's going to have a great year. We, we know they're going to heavily rely on their defense and Najee Harris. But all Trubisky has to do is be a game manager. That's all you got to do. And hey... The Steelers drafted Pickett, so guess what? Trubisky, it's probably a one-and-done in Pittsburgh anyway, but you can at least become a starter for another team next year. And people forget he was on the Bills last year. Maybe some some of Sean McDermott's coaching, you know, rubbed up on him a little bit. You know, we, we see that all the time. Even guys like 29, Marcus Mariota, you know, where he was a starter, became a backup for a year or two, and now is getting the starting job back in Atlanta. Now, he's not going to do anything near what Matt Ryan was doing with them. That, I will say, I do think the Falcons are going 4-13 and next year, which is going to be close to the uh, Jets and Giants. I, I at least preseason predictions. I have the two New York teams being the two worst in the league next year. But anyway, um, the Falcons are probably going to be third on that list. And yeah, you know, Mariota's already been named the starter. You knew he wasn't, you know, as cool it would be to see um, Desmond Ryder get the starting job. You knew it wasn't going to happen right away considering he was drafted in what, like the third, fourth round. You knew Mariota was going to be that guy. Um, but it's very interesting because 
I think Mariota, obviously one of the more athletic quarterbacks in the league, blazing speed, great scrambler, but he is a terrible pocket passer. And that was my one concern I've always had with him when he was on the Titans. This guy, when the pocket collapses, he panics and he just throws some awful pass to a defender. Literally, go watch his 2017 and 2018 highlights. When the pocket collapses and he doesn't have a guy open when he's throwing on the run, he's either throwing out of bounds or he's throwing a terrible interception. He's a very good, for the Falcons, I think they need this, he's a very good stopgap option. He's a guy who's going to, you know, win you four or five games. He's not going to put up tremendous stats, but, you know, if he throws 20 touchdowns and, you know, rushes for another four or five that's a successful season. Another concern I have with Mariota, kind of the same thing as Daniel Jones. Even if he's when he's not injury prone, or excuse me, when he's not turnover prone, he's injury prone. All right. I'm sorry, Mariota, but I gotta put you at 29. All right, Zach Wilson at 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a dog for sleeping with his uh, <laughs> mother's friends or whatever the deal is with that. Yeah. Zach Wilson, cool for that, but let's be real. Quarterback-wise, he's going to probably have just about the same, if not a better, year two, but I still see him, at least pre-rankings, I see him ranked as 28th. I know people are going to argue that, oh, well, you have Justin Fields at 25th, and Wilson statistically had a better season than Fields next year, but this is also kind of my predictions heading into the season also a little bit, and honestly, I do see Fields having a slim bit better of a season then uh, Zach Wilson. Now, I think Garrett Wilson's going to do fantastic on the Jets. Don't get me wrong. But other than that, I feel like the Jets really lack weapons. They did sign uh, CJ Uzoma. Got Corey Davis back. I don't know what, what that's going to do. Elijah Moore. Like, they have pieces on that offense. I just don't think he's going to be that good. Um, they signed Dwayne Brown today after they lost Mekhi Becton. So you're kind of replacing a very solid tackle with a very solid tackle. We'll see how Wilson does. I think he's going to improve. Don't worry. He's not going to lose the starting job there for at least another two years after this. So I wouldn't worry if Wilson has another mediocre season. Unlike if you're a fan of this guy, I would be panicking if he has a mediocre season. To a Tunga Vailoa. The it is put up or shut up for Tunga Vailoa. I have seen Tua throw... 50-yard bombs to Tyreek Hill in practice, and I have seen Tua throw terrible passes that weren't even five yards close to the tight end on a simple tight end route. I I don't know what to gauge on Tua, all right? I, I, I know if you look at his statistics, he's thrown a lot more touchdowns than he has interceptions, and he has a winning record, but how much of that is because the Dolphins consistently have a solid running game, a top defense usually, and how much is that due to Brian Flores' will to win? That's the main question. All right, now he's got the weapons. Mike Kosicki on the franchise tag. Obviously, they have Tyreek Hill now. Jalen Waddle heading into year two. Come on. It just... This is the make or break year for Tua. I can't put Tua, at least before the regular season starts, I can't put him any higher than 27. Well, actually, if I was being really nice, I could have put him at like 25th or 24th. But no, I don't think Tua's worthy. And look at this man, Davis Mills. He's worthy of being 26. And I have no issue with saying he's been better than Tua. This guy, say what you want about Mills. I don't think he's going to be the long-term option. In fact, I seriously think the Texans are not going to stick with Mills for a third season if he does the same, if not a little worse, than he did last year. But let me tell you something. Mills is turning into one of those quarterbacks where if you're running a flea flicker, get him on your team. He, he scored a flea flicker against the Patriots. He scored a flea flicker against the Titans. Like, this guy, when replacing Tyrod Taylor last year, an amazing season. I mean, he shocked the hell out of everybody. I mean, what was he, a fifth-round pick, sixth-round pick? I don't remember, but I literally came out of nowhere and, you know, never played fantastic. He was never a top-10 quarterback at any point of last season, but for a guy who's thrown in a terrible situation with his only option 
really being an aging Danny Amendola and Brandon Cooks. He did a phenomenal, phenomenal job last year. I'm giving Mills my props, and I'm putting him ahead of 2-1 Zach Wilson. Say what you want, but I think Mills was more impressive. 25, we have Justin Fields. I mean, Mills even had a better season than Fields and Lawrence, but neither here nor there. Fields at 25, like I previously mentioned, without Matt Nagy, I think Fields is going to do at least a little bit better than what he did last year. Um, I heard he's been surprising, like, his coaches during training camp, but I feel like we hear that a lot for all quarterbacks, so I don't really know what to go off of that. What I will say, though, is... He does not have a lot of good weapons. They acquired Nikhil Harry. They have David Moore. Um, Daryl Mooney really is the only option. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean that, that's your main receiver anyway, and I think Cole Komet's going to do a nice job, uh, you know, increasing his tight end role. But yeah, no, offensive line's still mediocre. The Bears are still going to live and die by their defense. All you want is Fields to throw for 3,000 yards and like 20 touchdowns. And he's a very good, elusive quarterback also. So, you want to know what? Fields does that. It's fine. It's a successful season. 24, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I know. He was statistically terrible. Dude, you have Urban Meyer as your head coach. (sighs) That's all I got to say. Too much distractions. And his three wins came against playoff caliber teams. Three wins came against Miami, Indianapolis, two teams that were one win shy of qualifying for the playoffs. And although he played terrible in this game, he is also 1-0 against the Buffalo Bills in his career. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Listen, uh, now granted, I'm kind of cherry picking there. But still, I think Lawrence is going to have a great year too. I mean, we're really building him around him now. Say what you want about that Christian Kirk contract. We had to overpay him, or else he was signing with the Eagles and not us. So, we had to overpay him when we signed Christian Kirk. Keeping Marvin Jones around, keeping LaVisca Chenault around. I think Gall's going to be good. I think he's going to do a little bit better. Um, I mean, we didn't really upgrade the tight end position because Evan Ingram sucks. But, I heard Ingram was at least improving near the end of training camp. Again, I don't really know if I should, you know... I don't know how good to weigh that on, but hey, at least if he's improving, that's all I need to know, right? 23, Trey Lance. Uh, yeah, Trey Lance is, he's, he's going to be that guy. He's going to be that guy in San Francisco, I think. He is the guy that they've needed for a while. Um, I think Garoppolo's good, but I also think Garoppolo is too injury prone to really do anything long term. You know, he sent him to a Super Bowl and he sent him to two NFC Championship games. The fact you even got that Av Garoppolo, that's fine. Now you have a younger quarterback, much more athletic, hopefully much less injury prone, and a guy who's already played a few games in his career. You know, he played last year against Arizona, he played against the Texans, won that game. And he even scored his first career touchdown against the Lions back in week one. Like, this guy at least has a little bit of NFL action underneath his belt. And I think the more chances he gets, the better he's going to do. San Francisco still has a top five, I would say. Yeah, I would say top five defense in the league. I think Trey's going to do just fine. I love Jimmy Garoppolo. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks, actually. But I do think Trey Lance is going to do just fine. And I think San Francisco is going to be in the same spot, if not better, with him under center. Carson went to 22. Man, back in, like, 2017, I would have had him at, like, number three. And then, you know, back in 2020, I would have still had him at around, like, 14, 13. Uh, it just sucks how injuries and it's it's it was the injuries in Philadelphia. I just think in Indianapolis why he struggled so much was because I, I don't know if it was the lack of weapons, the coaching. I don't know what the deal was. He wasn't bad last year statistically. He was fantastic. It's just he's a game manager and. 
He's literally just a game manager. He's been exposed now, Carson Wentz. As much as I hate to say it, he's kind of been exposed. He's going to be that guy who, in a couple of years, I hate to say backup, but he probably has too good of a resume to be a backup anytime soon, but he literally is going to be that guy who you just have for a season if you're a fringe playoff team and then you trade him for like a third or fourth round pick after a year or two. It's kind of thank you for your service. Now here's another chance. Ugh. It's tough to determine what Carson Wentz is going to do and what's he going to look like in the future. I don't think the Commanders is the answer. If I'm being honest, uh, they just lost their best offensive lineman, Brendan Sheriff. They re-signed Terry McLaurin, which is nice, but just got hope like Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas stay healthy this year. Like really, the Commanders, other than Gibson. And McLaurin, I don't really know what they have for weapons. I don't think it's much, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, I think Wentz, if not this year, it'll be next year. I, but yeah, I, I do think eventually Carson Wentz will be on the move again. Jalen Hurts at 21. He could definitely be in the top 15 next season. I just want to see more out of Hurts. He was kind of mediocre his rookie season, but he surprised me last year. I, I was not expecting the Eagles to make the playoffs last year, and... I can assure you, as much as I love Gardner Minshew, I don't know if the Eagles make the playoffs with Hurts, uh, with Minshew as their starting quarterback rather than Hurts. I was very impressed, and uh, one of the best throwing on the run quarterbacks. He, he seems like if he can just limit the turnovers, he's going to be just fine. He's going to be the Eagles' starting quarterback for a while. Number 20, Baker Mayfield. People, if you think Baker Mayfield does not belong in the top 32 quarterbacks. You're literally the most insane man on the planet. Let me just tell you this much. Do you realize, and I've already talked about this in my Mayfield video I made when he got traded to the Panthers, but dude, you want to know how many injuries he was playing through? He was playing through a rib injury, a broken foot. He was playing through all that. Well, just so the Browns could make a playoff spot. And you know he would have played that week 16 game against the Raiders if he didn't test positive for COVID. That's another game he would have played. Like, I give Mayfield all the cred in the world for trying to play through the injuries. All the cred in the world. I think he was treated absolutely poorly in Cleveland. Should have never been traded in the first place. And based off of what I heard, he's winning the job over Sam Darnold, which doesn't shock me one bit. So I, I hope Mayfield goes off against the Browns week one, throws for 400 yards and just demolishes Cleveland. All right. I don't even care if that's his only win or only decent performance from next season. I just want him to destroy the Browns week one. All right. Number 19, Jared Goff. Again, people don't think Jared Goff is great. People are like, Jared Goff is ranked my 28th best quarterback in the league right now is Jared Goff. Listen, do you realize how stupid you sound? Again, you are doubting a veteran who, yeah, is in a terrible situation, but as a player standpoint himself, he is not fantastic, but he's going to win you games. Detroit probably only wins one or two games last year if Goff isn't their quarterback. Goff is a guy who's he's not fantastic, but you want to know what he's going to do. He's going to throw for 3,800 yards and like 25 to 30 touchdowns. If he's, I mean, if he's doing really good, 30 touchdowns. And he's he's going to win you games, but he's also going to get you a lot of passing yards. And he's going to keep you in a lot of games. Whether he wins them or loses them, he's going to keep you in games. I like Jared Goff. 18, I have Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill would have been, he, he was my 15th quarterback. If I'm, Basing it off this list, before that playoff game against Cincinnati last year, he was ranked as my 15th quarterback. No. No, 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 no. Not after that. Whatever that game was last year against Cincinnati, that was one of the worst quarterback performances I've ever seen. Three interceptions. Three interceptions. And now A.J. Brown is gone. Better hope Derrick Henry stays healthy all 18 games because, rather 17 games, or else I think it's going to be a long season for Ryan Tannehill. Don't think we're seeing Malik Willis anytime soon either. 
because Tannehill's contract is too huge to trade away or to just outright bench him. But yeah, I don't I don't think Tannehill's that good anymore, at least compared to the past couple of years. 17, Jameis Winston, he's coming back for that injury. He's going to do great, and I think he is the reason why the Saints didn't make the playoffs last year, Winston. If he stays healthy, I think the Saints win 11 games and they make the playoffs and not the Eagles. Say what you will, but that's what I honestly think. Winston, when healthy, he's definitely throwing 30 touchdowns next year. 16's Matt Ryan. I heard Ryan's adjusting very well. He's liking Frank Wright's coaching, and he didn't throw a pick all training camp. If he didn't throw an interception all training camp, you're doing something right. There you go, Matt Ryan. I I love to see it. You know, even as a Jaguar fan, I you know I'm not a Colts fan in the slightest bit, but I am a huge Matt Ryan guy. So, you know what? If he succeeds, and if the Colts surpass the Titans in the division this year, so be it. Good for Matt Ryan. Hopefully. He does what Matthew Stafford does, and, you know, if he makes the playoffs, do so just win the Super Bowl and basically assure yourself a spot in the Hall of Fame. Number 15, we have Mac Jones. Uh, last year, based off performance, you probably rank him at, like, 19th or 18th, but this is kind of one of those predictions where, yeah, I'm basically predicting, not judging off of last year. If he threw, what was it, 22 touchdowns and, like, almost 4,000 yards last year... Yeah, imagine what he's going to do in year two with better receivers. I think Tyquan Thornton, that rookie receiver they got at Baylor, I think he's going to do fantastic. I think he is going to do great. Hunter Henry still one of the best tight end uh, red zone options out there right now. Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne. They just they also acquired Devontae Parker. Oh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the Patriots are... Locked and loaded. A lot of people don't think New England's going to do great next year. Don't count them out, man. Never count out the Patriots. All right, 14, we have Kyler Murray. Yeah, second highest paid quarterback. What was Arizona thinking giving Kyler Murray that contract? No playoff wins. He was injured for, what was it, like four or five games last year and got absolutely blown up in the wild card round. Cardinals didn't stand a chance from kickoff. And part of that reason was because Kyler Murray was playing absolutely horrendous. Now, granted, the offensive line was terrible that game. But Murray, without DeAndre Hopkins the first six games of the year, losing Christian Kirk. I mean, I think Rondell Moore is going to shine now, but... (sighs) I mean, who else are you throwing to? Aging Zach Ertz? Aging A.J. Green? I don't know, man. I don't really think the Cardinals are going to do that good next year, if I'm being brutally honest. 13th, Kirk Cousins. People are going to be like, well, you should still have Kyler Murray over Kirk Cousins. Absolutely not. Especially from a statistical standpoint, absolutely not. There's only one quarterback who's thrown 25 or more touchdowns in each of the last seven seasons, and that's Kirk Cousins. Consistently consistent. Mike Zimmer despised Kirk Cousins. For whatever reason, Mike Zimmer never liked his quarterback style. Well, guess what? Kevin O'Connell, a nice, bright, young head coach in this league, a former quarterback. I think he's going to appreciate Cousins' play more. Adam Thielen's coming back. Irv Smith Jr.'s coming back. Dalvin Cook is coming back. Guys, the Vikings are going to be scary. You don't want to admit that Kirk Cousins is a very, very good, but he is, and he's better than guys like Kyler Murray and Matt Ryan and Ryan Tannehill and Jalen Hurts. Y'all want to disagree with me? You can. This is just my opinion, but I think Kirk Cousins is consistently the most criminally underrated quarterback in the league, and I love Kirk Cousins. Like, Next to Trevor Lawrence and Blake Bortles and Gardner Minshew, (laughs) it's Kirk Cousins. He's probably my favorite non-quarterback to ever play on the Jaguars, not named Drew Brees. Love Kirk Cousins. I still have his uh, commander's jersey somewhere in my room. (laughs) All right, number 12, you have Deshaun Watson. Well, we know... I made well. I made this list before he got suspended, so he's suspended for six games. The NFL's trying to make it a year. People who still have Deshaun Watson in their top five quarterbacks, bro. What? I know he's going from Houston to Cleveland, a significantly better situation. Even if the Browns lost Odell and Jarvis Landry, they still have Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples Jones, who I think is going to play pretty good. So, 
Yeah, I, I understand. He's still, and obviously with Nick Chubb, and even if Kareem Hunt does get traded, I know he requested a trade earlier in the week, he's still going to do fantastic. And I get what you're saying, but also you have to realize is this is a man who has not only played for the last year, but is also dealing with a lot of off-the-field issues right now with this whole court situation, right? You got to think his mind isn't fully on football. He can say whatever he wants. I don't believe his mind is fully focused on football right now. And I think Watson will do bad and... I don't know. Again, I really felt like the Browns just stuck with Mayfield. I, I don't think they should have traded for Deshaun Watson. And on top of not only trade for Deshaun Watson, but give him $250 million. That's the other thing. What if he becomes the quarterbacks of Albert Hainsworth? You give him all that guaranteed money and now he sucks. And you want to buy out his contract after three years. Well, guess what, morons? You're stuck with him. We'll see what happens. Only time will tell about Watson. But people who are putting him in like the top like five or even the top eight, I'm like, you're you're crazy. If you want to put him top ten over guys like Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford, maybe even Dak Prescott, from a talent standpoint, sure. But oh my god, people are like he's gonna lead the league in passing yards if he didn't get suspended. Shh. Those people, I want you to realize what you're saying and calm down. <laughs> All right, number eleven, Derek Carr. I'm going to be honest with you, I probably would have put Watson at 11 if the Raiders didn't make the playoffs last year. But for Derek Carr, man, to lose Henry Ruggs, to lose Antonio Brown, to lose all these talented receivers over the last couple of years, he deserves Devontae Adams. He 100% deserves Devontae Adams after all the bull crap he's had to deal with joining the Raiders. Losing receivers like Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, and as I previously mentioned, Brown and Ruggs. Oh my goodness, he deserves a wide receiver like Devontae Adams. And he deserves an amazing route runner like Hunter Renfro. And the third best tight end in the league and Darren Waller. Oh yeah, Raven fans, I'm coming right at you. Darren Waller over Mark Andrews. You don't you know you don't need to believe it, but I said it. Anyway. <laughs> nah. I always get in arguments with people because I'm always like, Darren Waller is better than Mark Andrews. Why don't you why don't, why don't you understand? Anyway. Yeah, Derek Carr just he, he's gonna do great with Adams and Renfro. I think Carr's throwing well over 35. He's gonna throw Hopefully close to 35. I think he's throwing well over 30 touchdowns if he stays healthy. Raiders, I, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. They were in the AFC South or even the North. I would probably say Raiders make the playoffs. They're in the West. I doubt it. And you see, he's at number 11. And he's still the worst starting quarterback in the AFC West. But listen, listen, he's going to be fantastic. And that just shows you how incredible the AFC West is. Number 10, Matthew Stafford. To be honest with you, I, I <laughs> kind of like before, if Matthew Stafford didn't win the Super Bowl, I probably would have put Derek Carr 10, Stafford at 11 or 12. But I, you got to give credit to Matthew Stafford, man. I mean, one year after Detroit, he wins a Super Bowl. Good for him. Good, great for him. I love Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup's going to have another great year. He's probably not going to have a, as good of a year as he did last year, but I still think that he's going to have a very, very solid season, Cooper Cup. You lost Robert Woods. You don't have Odell Beckham Jr. Well, you might be able to re-sign Odell Beckham Jr. Still a free agent. But you still have Allen Robinson. That's your Robert Woods replacement. You still have Van Jefferson. Tyler Higby didn't go anywhere. Cam Akers is going to be healthy. And Sean McVay just got extended. You're a happy man right now if you're Matthew Stafford. Let's see if the Rams can repeat there. Number nine, they have Dak Prescott. Say what you want about, oh, well, he's not a good playoff quarterback. Shut up. Let me just tell you right now. The reason why everyone hates Dak Prescott is, do I even need to say it? Because he plays on the Dallas Cowboys. If he was on the Rams or the Raiders or the Vikings or anywhere else but literally the Cowboys or maybe the Patriots, you would accept that he is, if not top 10, at least top 12 quarterback in the league. One of the best throwing on the run quarterbacks and one of the best play action quarterbacks. Play action. The only guy I am picking in a play action situation over Dak Prescott 
is Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. I kid you not. I think play action passing Dak Prescott ranks third in the league. And I think throwing on the run even after a huge ankle injury in 2020, I would still rank him a top 10 quarterback throwing on the run also. His deep ball, phenomenal. And I think... People who are saying that C.D. Lamb is going to break out and become a top 10 receiver, just remember who's throwing him the football. It's Dak Prescott. Let's start giving Dak the credit he deserves, shall we? Lamar Jackson at number 8. In terms of passing, I don't even know if I would rank Lamar in the top 15. I'm being honest. As a passer, I think he's not that great. As a runner, he's just so gift. He's just so gift. What am I trying to say? Giftedly athletic. That's what I was trying to say. Anyway, yeah. He's a freak of nature. You know, say what you want about 16 touchdowns to 13 interceptions and, you know, missing the last five or six games the last season. Say what you will about that. But, oh my God. His running game, easily the best running quarterback in the league. Don't tell Eagle fans to tell you it's Jalen Hurts. They're beyond wrong. <laughs> it's Lamar. Every sense of the word is Lamar. And remember, this guy won an MVP two seasons ago. Don't be sleeping on Lamar, all right? In terms of passing, yeah, Stafford, Prescott, Carr, Watson, maybe even Cousins or Murray's better. But just remember, just remember, in terms of athletic ability, Lamar Jackson is that guy. And, man, I cannot wait to see what contract he gets. I, I think he's getting well over $250 million. Number seven, Joe Burrow. People will probably put him over Russell Wilson. And I guess based off of last season, they kind of have all the reason to. But I put, honestly, I think I would have put Burrow in six if Wilson stayed in Seattle. But I put Burrow at seven because he had such a great season last year, but I want to see it again. You know, I kind of want to see him again before I could put him over a guy like Russell Wilson. But yes, I think Burrow is insane. Jamar Chase is going to go insane next year. Again, they lost CJ Uzma, but really that's about it. They still have Tyler Boyd. And, um, I think they acquired, yeah, they got Hayden Hurst, which that's a downgrade at tight end, but that's not really a downgrade. At least not by much. Yeah, Burrow's going to do fantastic. Uh, hopefully Cincinnati can, you know, win the Super Bowl this time around if they make it. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go wear my Bengals AFC championship shirt in another video if the Bengals uh, do well again this year. Yeah, and at six, I have Russell Wilson. Now, this was before Tim Patrick tore his ACL. But listen, Wilson's still going to do fantastic. We're all forgetting that he still had a very solid season even after, you know, breaking his finger and missing like four or five games yeah sure the Seahawks win loss record was terrible but in terms of Wilson statistics he was just about average he was just about doing what Russell Wilson usually does I don't know if stats off the top of my head but I don't think he threw many interceptions can't put him at five but I, I still think you know it's kind of like Dak Prescott kind of and Lamar Jackson just just keep in the back of your mind he's Russell Wilson and especially when this guy leaves the pocket, anything's possible. Number five, Justin Herbert. I mean, if you don't think Justin Herbert is anywhere in your top seven quarterbacks, I'm yelling at you. I'm like legit like yelling in your face saying, watch some highlights. Watch film. There is not a quarterback right now more passionate in this league than Justin Herbert. This guy... Should have been in the playoffs his first two years of the season. Well, first two years of his career. All right, Brent Staley, figure your analytics stuff out and get this man the playoffs. I think, you know, Chargers, they re-signed Mike Williams. They still have Keelan Allen. Um. Oh, yeah, and Austin Eckler's staying healthy, so... Yeah, well, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I think Herbert's going to do great. His deep ball, unmatched right now. I love Justin Herbert's deep ball. I mean, did you see that Hail Mary he threw against the Giants last year? That was like perfectly placed Hail Mary out of the pocket. Oh my God, it was tremendous. Actually, no, he wasn't out of the pocket, but he like corked that thing back, launched it like 50 yards in air, and I forgot who came up with it, but it was caught for a touchdown like right before halftime. That, that was like the highlight of the year for me. 
It was either that or Jamar Chase's touchdown against the uh, Chiefs in week uh, 17. Like, that throw Herbert made against the Giants, like, that was like... Basically, I was like, oh yeah, Herbert's like an 8th or 7th best quarterback. I think after he made that throw, that's where I was convinced he was top 5. Number 4, we have Tom Brady. Uh, now 45 years old. Ain't that crazy. Yeah, Brady's still going to be in my top five for pretty much as long as he plays. This will probably be his last year. It'll definitely be if the Buccaneers win the Super Bowl, which they obviously have a very good chance of doing so. He won't have Gronk this time around, but he's got Julio Jones, so he's still got weapons, right? And Russell Gage. And obviously Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And say what you want about Leonard Fournette <laughs> gaining all that weight, but... They're all still pieces of that Buccaneers offense. Tristan Wirfs, still at, what, 24 years old? Still one of the best right tackles in the league. Love Trish, love uh, Tristan Wirfs. You know, Ryan Jansen's out for the rest of the year. But other than that, that's really the only negative that's happened to the Buccaneers so far this offseason. Number three, Josh Allen. I, spoiler alert. This is the year that, at least in my opinion, this is the year that he finally breaks the camel's back. The Bills are making the Super Bowl, and Josh Allen probably win an MVP. I think Allen is throwing for 45 touchdowns this year, and uh, he's going to get well over 50 combined because he is a fantastic rushing quarterback. So I think Allen, over 50 touchdowns, he's getting MVP, but the only reason why I put him at three is because... Oh, he hasn't won that Super Bowl or MVP just yet. And it's because of that man right there, number two, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes has lost Tyreek Hill and he's lost weapons, but he's still got Travis Kelsey. He's still got Andy Reid as his head coach. They bring in guys like Juju Smith-Schuster. Mecole Hardman's still there. The Chiefs are still going to do fine. And at number one... Well, so yeah, Mahomes is he's still going to do great. Don't be surprised if the Chiefs are back in the AFC Championship game. And number one, Aaron Rodgers. In terms of playoff quarterbacks, oh my God, I would rank him so low here. I would rank him like 8th to or 12th, <laughs> like literally anywhere between there. I love Aaron Rodgers as a player, but when watching him in the playoffs, I become Skip Bayless level unlistenable to because it's not entirely his fault but Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs is terrible but he's number one on this list and I cannot just talk about his negatives we know all about his amazing deep ball I know it's been a while since he's completed a Hail Mary but still there's that there's still that likelihood even with guys like Allen and Herbert who have amazing arms in this league there's still that if I need a Hail Mary, I'm get I'm gonna pick Aaron Rodgers. And remember, this guy has won back-to-back -back MVPs. And for that reason alone, I know he's lost Devontae Adams. I know he has only Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, and a rookie to throw to. I know. I know. Losing Devontae Adams is gonna hurt. He's getting Robert Tungin back. I don't know what that means, but at least he's gonna be able to use a tight end. For more than a few games hopefully this year. He's going to do amazing. In the regular season. The, the only question is. does he Will he win in the playoffs? But I think he's going to do great in the regular season. Like I said. I think Josh Allen is winning MVP. But Aaron Rodgers is definitely going to be in the conversation. Even with Alan Lazard as his receiver one. He's still going to do good things. He's still going to be fantastic. He's, he's still going to show at like. What is he, 37, 38 years old? That he's still one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. So there you have it. These are my top 32, technically 33 if you include Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterbacks in the NFL. Let me know what you guys think. If you watch this whole video, thank you very much. I feel like I've been rambling on for about 40 minutes now. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your quarterback list is looking like in the comments below. And again, big shout out to my man, um, I think it's like, I think he changed his username. Yeah, he did. Big four sports updates. Make sure you go give him a follow. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm Grant Flo from Fletcher Sports. I'm saying enjoy the rest of your evening. And hopefully we'll have some NFL preseason broadcasts before I head off to college on September 2nd. All right. 
All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and see you guys in the next video. So a lot of guys there, but enjoy the rest of your evening and I can't wait to see you again.